Welcome everyone to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about Night Sky episode 1, it's called To The Stars and it is a first episode so I'll start spoiler free and there's not too much to spoil as with a lot of episode 1's, the first episode is largely just kind of getting to the, the premise of what the show is uh, but there's a bit of a hook at the end and there's you know things that you expect in a, a pilot episode but this is Amazon Prime's new show uh, with a pretty big pair of cast members. We got J.K. Simmons and we got Sissy Spacek. They play uh, an elderly couple who have a secret portal to a observation, sp- like, an observation building that's on an alien planet. So th- they, they, they can go out to their shed and there's a, to climb down the ladder in their shed, there's like a, like a teleportation pod that takes them to this, this small building that is on an alien planet where they go and enjoy the view of space, where there's this you know, very different nighttime sky, where there's a planet in the distance, and it's all very spectacular. And they've been living with this secret that they found this in their garden for... There's no, like specific timeline in this episode but it sounds like it's decades possibly early on when they moved to this house uh and that's the that, you know that, that's the, the kind of the gimmick the the, the the core plot thing uh the other main part of the show of course is just that this is an elderly couple who are kind of coming to grips with their age and the possibility that one of them might die in the near future and that's kind of what this first episode largely focuses on it sets up the premise, you know, before we get the title, you get the, the trip out to the shed and the kind of the, the first glimpse of this place where they go. Um, so that, that's, that's the gist of it. Uh, as, as far as, you know, how did I feel about the first episode? You know, where am I feeling after this kind of introduction? I, I would say I'm, a, I'm, I'm quite mixed on it. I mean, obviously, you've got a, a great pair of actors. Uh, there's no denying that. Um, obviously... Uh, J.K. Simmons very prolific. Sissy Spacek's done a lot of stuff, largely known for for Carrie, uh, which obviously, w- w- funnily enough, there's a flashback at the start of the episode showing you how they kind of first met, set in what looks like the seventies. And I thought the actress they got for young Sissy Spacek actually does look kind of like what she did. Uh, I mean, I could tell it was someone different, but you know, there was a definitely like because I know what she looked like in the seventies. It, it, there was kind of a a nice. A comparison between them so uh fair play uh so yeah it's nice to have them i saw her recently on uh, that show uh, castle rock uh, she was in that which obviously had some connections to stephen king and uh carrie uh through that which is why she ended up on that show um i like both the actors jk simmons is great uh by and large even when he's in something terrible he tends to do a, a good job of being the one good thing in it so and I, I liked the premise when I when I read it, you know, when I saw it coming up that it was this elderly couple who had this portal to something in space, you know, the space station. It's not a space station because it's not actually in space. It's you know, it's on a planet surface, but uh, but otherwise, it does seem like a station that's just there. And they just go out there and they sit and enjoy the view. He does some reading, and she kind of magically looks up at the stars and. Uh, the, the opening shot of the show, which is in the flashback, it sort of does this thing where it looks like you're looking at space, but then it sort of comes into focus and you realize it's just like a design on a wall. Uh, you know, it's just decoration. And we're actually in a bar in the 70s and the, the flashback plays out. Um, but I'm kind of mixed on the episode as a whole because I do think it's a little bit one note. And I think it's a bit one note for far too long. The episode is like 55 minutes long. And it kind of really just plays the same idea over and over again, which is they're old. They're not talking about the fact that one of them might die soon, potentially her, because she has had an accident a year prior. She has to be in a wheelchair a lot of the time. Uh, One of the big things in the middle of this episode is that he takes her to the doctors and he goes off and does other things while she's there. And she also goes and visits an old friend at an old folks home who's senile and can't really remember things. And... Everything that basically happens is them not talking about the fact that she is feeling old and she is feeling like her time is maybe coming to an end soon and questions of mortality and things like that. And just questions of being old. Like, he's taking care of her, but he's also pretty old himself, so he's struggling. He has to carry her places. Uh, Early on in the episode, he decides to sleep downstairs rather than go up uh, because his back's acting up, things like that. 
And it's like her coming to this realization that not only does she need taken care of, is that he may not really physically be capable for much longer to be the one to take care of her. And that's all fine. Like, but none of this is 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 bad. It's shot well enough, uh, if not exceptionally, but well enough. And obviously, these two actors know how to play the roles, and it's very natural, and it feels solid. Um. But it kind of beats you over the head with this a little bit. And so you've kind of already gotten it at this point. Uh, there's, a, there's a moment early on in the episode where he asks that why she's wanting to come out here and see the stars in their secret, you know, space pod more and more. And immediately you get, oh, it's because she's starting to think that she's not got much time left and she wants to make the most of it, perhaps, or something like that. So you already get that from, you know the first like 15 minutes you've already kind of got the idea that she's starting to think her time's getting coming to a close and he's not really accepted that and he's trying his best to either ignore it or try and prod her into admitting it so he can talk to her about it or, or whatever but you, you kind of get these ideas very early on but then you get it added and added and added you, you you get scenes where they're both taking their pills together in the morning and they've got those little dispensers where they've got each day's pills lined up and they're cracking jokes about it uh he's at the supermarket and he's being harassed because he's taking too long at the checkout um he's forgetting things Sh- she's having these little moments and the doctor's kind of like verbalizing a lot of what we've already figured out in the episode like everything she says to her at the doctor's appointment is something that the audience has already f- got like at least 10 minutes prior it's already been reiterated multiple times and we've got it through their interactions and through what they're going through that yeah maybe like you can't stay in this big house that's out and sort of like a rural area anymore maybe you have to go into assisted living or have a carer who comes out and checks up on you or whatever it may be whatever the the solution is going to be but there has to be some kind of change and it's something that we already get as an audience way before this point. So not only does it reiterate it again through little actions and little character moments repeatedly past this point in the doctor's office, and we've had it repeatedly before this point in the doctor's office, to have the doctor actually just outright say it <laughs> to her, uh, it just feels like, okay, now you're just verbalizing it and explaining it to me. And you already made it far too explicit. Like, I already feel like I'm being beat over the head with these details, and you're and I'm getting it, like, spelled out to me. And then you're going to do more with it afterwards. Um, and that's not to say that none of these moments on their own don't play well, or none of them are well acted, or... I mean, I think when... So the big thing in the middle of the episode, and this is, like, the mildest of spoilers, like I say, there's not much to really spoil in this first episode is J.K. Simmons, uh, his character Franklin, he is contacted by the granddaughter uh, to, to meet up, and he goes and sees her uh, in a cafe, gets a slice of cake. Well, Franz... Uh, sorry, I said Francis. because his name's Franklin. Irene. Well, Irene <laughs> is at the doctor's, right? That's Sissy Space's character. And because he's not shown up to pick her up afterwards, she, she goes across the street to the, where the old folks' home is and wants to see her friend... And would you believe it, her friend who lives there, uh, her, hus- her husband just died. So again, like, it's really beating you over the head with the themes and what it's doing. Um, and, and, you know, it's a fine line. It's very subjective and it's hard, it's hard to know when is it too much. And I, I guess maybe if there was just a bit more variety in what it was doing, that'd be fine. But I think because it is just, like, really trying to focus on this one key thing about these two people and what they're going through, it probably could have done with Rain in a little bit and maybe making some of its points a, a little later in the episode, you know, maybe, maybe have it, um, have something else that they're, they're talking about or, or, or going through that can then feed into these realizations of how they're feeling about their lives right now. But, you know, so you, you get all these moments where s- some woman thinks that she's, she lives there, you know, she's, Irene comes wheeling in the front door and she thinks, oh, you're out your room, let me take you back to your room. And it's like, she doesn't live there. Uh, and then the nurse who kind of knows her and is nice to her suggests, oh, maybe you'll have to move in soon. There's just all these little things. And then to top it all off, when she sees her friend who lives here, you know, you've seen scenes like this in movies and TV before. She talks to her old friend, but her old friend's memory is like completely gone. So she, she will say, hey, it's your old friend, Irene. And they'll reminisce for about 10 seconds. And then her friend will ask her who she is again. 
uh, she'll, she'll repeat the same lines again. And it happens quite a bit. Now, there is some good stuff that comes out of this scene. Basically, you know, this secret that her and her husband have about this, this space pod where they can go and look at this other, you know, solar system or whatever it is. They've never told anyone about it. And there's a brief conversation early on about maybe we should tell a granddaughter and like, ah, nah, 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 like, we shouldn't, you know, burden her with that. Um, and part of it, of course, is that Irene thinks she's important and thinks that there's a purpose and there's a reason why they found this and that there's something they're supposed to do with it even though all they've really ever done is look out the window <laughs> uh like there's a the brief moment where he says they tried putting like some i think it was mics outside uh but they got destroyed pretty quickly in the atmosphere so it was just kind of whatever but there's a kind of an emotional be here where she kind of opens up to her friend because she realizes that her friend is not going to remember anything she tells her so she just breaks down and opens up and tells her the secret and talks about how she thinks she's important and i think th th this is maybe where i the mixed feeling i have feels a little better because i can kind of see how this works if just slightly rearranged i, I think if you have heard go through so the story of the episode if you had if he had that be more her trying to achieve something and her husband keeps saying oh this is maybe a bit risky this is a lot of effort to be have to do this now so you, you we, if you if you have her like be determined to try and achieve something with this space pod like she's trying to set up goals and you imply that it's been a long time there's never really been any like advancement or discovery with it and it feels a bit futile to him but she's doing it anyway like you could have us infer a little bit through her actions and through her determination that she's doing this stuff because she needs to feel important she feels kind of like useless and that she needs to be taken care of and she wants to feel like she's contributing something and that she is important in some way um and here she verbalizes it and she says i you know i'm important because i found this thing and i'm supposed to do something with it she just says it and that's fine to a point but it would be far more engaging for the audience if we saw her trying to do something fail and get no result and kind of come to the realization perhaps a little later in the episode um and maybe even this scene like this idea for a scene where she goes to see a friend and she can finally open up and talk to someone about it other than her husband and be brutally honest like you can still have her verbalize it and that'd be fine but if it was like a almost like an admission that explains her actions up until this point in the episode it would be far more fulfilling if we saw her, you know, whatever it may be, whether she's trying to put more things outside in, in this other planet, whether or not she's trying to do all this research or something and coming up short, whatever it may be. If she was doing all this stuff and then it was sort of failing and she was trying to hide her disappointment and her husband was kind of a little oblivious because he's just trying to get on with life. And then we got this scene where she breaks down and says she believes she's important. She has to be. And... Obviously, this is kind of a metaphor for just getting old and just feeling like you can't contribute anymore. Uh, you know, all the obvious, like, analogies that you could make with this. Then I think it would hit harder. I think it would hit and it would feel like, oh, suddenly I understand, like, her motivations and why she's doing this. And maybe she's not even realized this herself, that this is what her motivation is and why she feels so determined to do something, to achieve something. Uh, but instead, we just get a lot of, they're old, they're struggling, they're not talking about it as much as they should be, and it's, we're reminded of it over and over again. Um, so it doesn't really feel like they're trying to achieve anything, or she's trying to achieve anything. Uh, I think that would maybe make this more of a, a harder-hitting moment, and help the episode as a whole, because it would be more subtext, at least for a while, before it really came to the front. And instead, it's just kind of at the front from the, the get-go. And it's there all episode, and it's over and over again. So, which made it a little bit of a... a chore's a, a harsh word, but it did feel very slow. And I think that's part. I think that's the main reason why it felt slow. It's not that it has to be this quick action show. I, I was not expecting that from this. But it does feel like it's reiterating the same character beat over and over again. Um, until the ending where she's going to make a choice. And we'll, I'll, you know, I'll give a spoiler warning before I talk about that, but... Um, you know, and I'm fine with him, like, you know, the husband forgets that she's at a doctor's, we get a scene where he arrives home, and he starts saying, hey honey, I'm home, and it takes, and you know, JK Simmons does the moment great, where he, there's a moment where you can see it in his face, he's realised what he's done, that he's forgotten she was at the doctor's, he was supposed to pick her up, and it's, you know, it's this awkward 
thing where he has to go and do it now and it's it's kind of quiet and there's just this atmosphere to it that moment's again solid and kind of makes the point that maybe he's no longer no longer capable of looking after another person anymore maybe he's still okay on his own but he's maybe not the one who should be looking after someone else and that's that's totally fine uh but again you know it kind of felt like we'd been beating this over our heads over the course of the episode um and i i get that you know maybe it's realistic that it's this much and that there is all these little things constantly but th- that doesn't mean that when you're constructing a story that you you tell it that way you know you, these things can be happening we just don't necessarily have to see them all and that's okay um so yeah i think that's my biggest problem with it is that it does feel so one note in this first episode and it doesn't really get to the hook. You know, there is a hook at the end of the episode, but the trailer, you know, kind of, like, spoiled what the hook was, as is often with TV shows, because they have to, like, sell you what the season is going to be. And the mystery and the mythology of what this space pod is, and the maybe there's going to be more revealed about it, uh, which there is going to be, like, none of that is even remotely a thing this episode until the final few seconds, and then it's like, okay, this is your door to start asking more questions and doing more things and the hook's okay it, 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 you know it's fine um it, it felt like a little bit lukewarm compared to what it could have done and I, I wonder if it's maybe because the trailer did spoil this like outright what this moment was if it had just like sort of given you some later stuff but didn't reveal this is how it was going to start i think it would this moment may have hit a bit more uh it also may have hit a bit more if i, I don't know like Maybe, because the thing is, we, we, you know, after the first moment, the first big scene we get in the pod where they go out there, they don't actually, like, it's not until the very end of the episode where she goes back out there again. And it didn't really feel like we'd spent enough time in there to really, like, feel what, we, what you're supposed to feel, I think, at the end. So I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute when I can, t- I'll talk spoilers. Uh, there's some other stuff going on. There's, like, a nosy neighbor who's convinced that they've got a secret, and he's meant to be kind of a comic relief but also kind of poking his nose into it kind of character. Um, thus far, he's a bit of a just a, a nothing, I would say, and uh, I've seen better versions of this type of character done in other shows. Um, I have not, not, not much to add on that, uh, but the idea that you're building a supporting set of characters of the neighbor, the granddaughter, uh, who may eventually get involved and figure out or know what's going on at some point like i I get the the appeal here is that there's people for the secret to be revealed to and possibly be helpful down the line when there's maybe you know a crisis or something uh to 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 deal with so and i can see how that would play into things the idea that you know them keeping this secret of this place obviously there's a lot of reasons why they kept it a secret (laughs) <laughs> in the first place but this idea that you know much like not admitting they need help with certain things um the idea that eventually they'll let people in the secret and they they are necessary to help with whatever's going on like i can see how that would play into the the themes of of accepting help and uh and growing old and stuff like that so yeah i'll, I'll say you know mild spoiler warning then uh just because i want to talk about what happens at the ending but i will say that the ending uh, other than maybe a little bit of the character stuff is in the trailer right so if you saw the trailer you know you've heard what i'm going to talk about um the, the thing that's in the trailer of course is that there is a, another character in the space pod like and then this like observation deck that uh they visit there's a character at the end the cliffhanger is that there's an injured character saying please help uh and she's like who are you and it cuts to black um that's the thing that's in the trailer pretty much and it leads to the idea that these you know someone built these things there are other people using them there's possibly more of them on earth more portals on earth like the trailer kind of implied a lot of this stuff and that's vaguely interesting it's you know i I, and admittedly the trailer left me a little lukewarm as well it kind of felt like i was getting i don't know just a derivative kind of mystery from like shows from the 2000s and stuff that um i do remember fondly but like i I wasn't necessarily feeling the spark when i was seeing the trailer um the big character thing at the end of the episode and i i wish i felt more for it and i if it if the episode had done more again to sort of like build up and sort of reveal how she felt as opposed to like what it does do um I'd probably felt more for this but at the end of the episode sissy spacex character irene is going to commit suicide 
she is going to go and walk into the the planet's surface and and die uh, in the stars because she she feels that she's been waiting too long and it's not that she hate you know she 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 leaves this you know the, the narration at the end is her writing this like suicide note to her husband and saying how much she loves him and how this is not done out of of malice it's not because she doesn't want to be with him it's just that she's just ready to die and it's it's a well enough done scene honestly like i think it builds up well you know nice and it, the the way it kind of like has her struck because you know we saw before that he had to carry her down so she's struggling to get down this ladder and she's going over and the music's playing it, it builds up nicely and shows just how determined she is to do this uh i i kind of i think if i cared more by this point about the characters and i I was kind of like rooting. I think that I think part of the problem is as well is that you know for a fact that it's not going to happen. Like I was like, okay, this is the moment she's going to find someone because this is going to interrupt the the suicide, and she's going to probably hide that letter, and that's going to be something she has to maybe reveal or is found out about later in the season that she was going to do this. Um, and I assume that in many ways she's going to like find her lust for life again. Uh, over the course of like having a purpose by helping this man and get into whatever danger they're going to get into because there's an organization or something that is looking for these space pods. Like, conceptually, all these ideas all appeal to me. Um, which is why it's such a shame that uh, my, my reaction to the episode is very lukewarm and that of an episode that was just a lot, you know, just very slow to get through. And it's always possible, of course, that now that they've introduced the the storyline hook because this first episode is all character right you know this final scene is the only scene that really introduces what the story of the season is going to be in terms of plot you know you know beyond what the characters are going to go through and what their journeys might be and i wouldn't say the cliffhanger left me like jazzed or excited for for more i you know it, it kind of felt like too little too late in a, in a weird way and it is always possible that it, it, you know it's like one of those shows where ah the first episode's a bit weak or a bit slow but then it picks up because it can delve into what it's actually about um and it's possible it is entirely possible but nothing in this first episode made me feel particularly confident that it was going to to be like that but I, I, you know, I, I don't want to say don't give it a try necessarily. I think if it, if the show appeals to you, you know, give it a go and see how it is. I, I think this, you know, I hate to always dogpile on this, but I do feel like a lot of shows in this like streaming era, especially the ones they put out as one big season and they don't do a weekly release, which I do think is better, is they kind of rely too much on this. Oh, people will probably at least watch the second episode with it. Yeah, they're going to just go straight on to the next one if there's a if there's a little cliffhanger, and I don't know. Like, I, I maybe maybe people aren't as critical as I am by and large, but if I feel like the the pacing and the way you're treating my time for spending with your show in that first episode, if I feel like you're you're wasting it because you just assume that I'm an easy get to watch the next one. No, if if I rec if I recognize that I feel like you're dragging your feet a little bit and you're stretching things out, like I'm going to then assume that you're going to do that more throughout the season, maybe the entire season, and it puts me off wanting to watch any more of your of your show. So I I would say that this first episode is a bit of a failure on that respect. Even though the concepts are fine, even though the actors put in good performances. And there's a couple of moments that I do think kind of hint at what the show could be. Um, I'm not feeling that, you know, high on it after this first one, I have to say. So that's a shame. That's a shame. Because, uh, you know, th th this, this, this pair of actors definitely deserve something a little bit better. And I, I do think there's partly maybe a self-indulgence thing. Not on the actor's part, but on like the... The creators part like I, I mean maybe they already wrote the script before they knew who they were getting to star in the show but it does kind of feel like oh we've got these two great actors let's let them just act let's just let them act for for as much as possible we'll just give them all this material to sit and act with and 
that's all fine and well, but the, like, <laughs> if your writing's not up to snuff, or you're 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 holding back plot to like overindulge and just them playing, you know, getting to the point where they're talking about being old and reminiscing about their dead son and and whatever else, then it is it's more harmful. It's more it's more of a detriment to the the story uh, and the show than than it isn't. I I have to say, so. Yeah, not super high on it. Uh, that's Night Sky, uh, first episode from Amazon Prime. I I, uh, I didn't actually check, but I, th- I think they put the whole season up, uh, and you know today. So yeah, you know, check it out. See see how you feel about it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you want to support all the content, you can head over to patreon.com slash TV and support everything we do and keep all the, the content coming. Uh, it's worth mentioning a lot of the pilots I cover are covered because they rank high on the pilot uh, the vote that happens every month. Uh, Night Sky was actually the top ranking show for the month, so naturally I'm reviewing the pilot. Uh, the, the second ranked show uh, was Obi Wan Kenobi, so I'm definitely covering that as well. So uh, eek, uh, I'll check out that next week. And I'm not a Star Wars guy, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I, I expect ambivalence, uh, possibly hatred at worst. So uh, let me know what you thought of this one in the comments if you give it a chance. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, ding the bell for notifications. All those things help as well. Uh, But that is me. So thank you once again for watching or listening. I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?